I've only ever seen one other example of this. It's a fascinating and very rare type of artefact. It's rare now. Once upon a time, they were very common. These were your calendar, your diary, the medieval equivalent of everybody's mobile phone to give you practical information. But precisely because they were used on a day-to-day -day basis, one that survives in pretty good condition is all the more valuable. The owner of this book wanted something that was functional, that was practical, but didn't want something luxurious. It was probably for a layperson, perhaps a gentleman farmer, who needed practical information about the time and the seasons. So we see for each month, there is a labour of the month and a zodiac symbol. The other side of it gives us complicated information about how to calculate Easter. Now it's fairly unlikely that the type of user we've hypothesised would ever have used that. It's the same again as a modern mobile phone, which has many apps that you probably don't use, but they're standard, so they're there too. Right. Next page, please. What we're looking at here are the pigments in the manuscript, and we want to identify these without damaging the manuscript and without contacting the manuscript. And in Raman spectroscopy, we're looking at the vibrational fingerprint of the molecules on yep. the page. And to measure that, we shine a laser a very low power laser, I should, uh, should add, onto the page. Most of the light gets scattered with the same wavelength as goes in, but a tiny amount comes off at a slightly different wavelength, different colour, and we measure the difference between what goes in and what comes out, and that gives us that fingerprint for the materials on the page. OK, so let, let's have a look at this page here. This is particularly interesting because this page represents pretty much all of the pigments we've found in the book. Um, what we find the red here, as we expected, is mercury sulphide, which is this pigment called vermilion, may well be synthetic in this period. The dark blue of the tunic, or greeny blue, is, is indigo, extracted from the woad plant or, or potentially imported in this period. What's really exciting about this is the club. You can see here one of the, the twins, one of the Gemini twins, is holding up a, a club in his hand. Looks and we found in there. Quite an Specs. unexciting yellow colour. Well, it's a very dull uh, yeah. colour, but we found in there orpiment, arsenic 3 sulphide which is quite a, uh, an unusual find in books of this period. It's not common to find orpiment in, in this book. Of course, it's a highly toxic material as well, so it uh, really is quite a dangerous club he's holding there. Wow, orpiment! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the club is orpiment. That's a pretty good spectrum. Even though I say so myself. That's <laughs> <laughs> the content of the calendar lets us work out that it's either at the end of the 14th century or at the beginning of the 15th century. Now the yellow, or the brown yellow in here, we know is orpiment, a poisonous pigment. It's fairly rare in the later Middle Ages. And around 1400, a beautiful new yellow is widely available in England, lead tin yellow, and it pushes all other yellows out. Here, orpiment is still being used, not lead tin yellow. And that, therefore, suggests it's more likely to be the end of the 14th century than the beginning of the 15th century. We can see, looking at this almanac that you're going to take away and conserve in your studio, it's got some damage, it's been well used. Um, what can you say about its kind of past life based on looking at its condition? Mm -hmm. We can see those modern stitches here, but mm -hmm. we can see like uh, these are uh, replacement of like old mm -hmm. original repairs, which we can see along here. So it's been torn mm -hmm. and repaired yes, yeah. at different times mm -hmm. throughout its yes, history yeah. and we can see the different threads. Yes, and it just uh, tells us like uh, the object was really like um, loved and cared for. So now, uh, Looking at these threads, this is uh, the replacement of original repairs, which is carried out much longer ago. And we think uh, this is quite a modern repair, and we think this can be improved by replacing with Japanese paper repair. The fact it was handled quite heavily is what make this object quite rare. 
at the moment it is too difficult to handle by anyone and there is some damages which can um, get worse by wrong handling so it just uh, we trying to keep all the evidence of the history there but trying to make it accessible by public we're not trying to clean or we're not trying to transform the appearance of the object So what is remarkable about this is that it's very clearly been used and over a considerable period of time, but it still survives. We know from documentary records that these were widespread timekeeping devices, but because they were used on a day-to-day -day basis, they fell apart, they were discarded, and only a small number of them survive, about 30 worldwide. To have in near perfect condition, such a well-loved, well-used, rare class of book, now rare class of book, is a miracle in itself.